Welcome to the Nourishment Mindset Podcast, your guide to good food, good health, and a good life. And now, here's your host, Nutrition Network Advisor and author of The Nourishment Mindset, Dixie Huey. Happy Transformation Tuesday, y'all, and welcome to or back to the Nourishment Mindset Podcast, where we are on a metabolic mission to help you achieve vitality and reverse or prevent chronic lifestyle conditions using real whole foods, straight talk, and the pleasures of the table. So if you haven't yet bought my book, The Nourishment Mindset, go ahead and hit pause on this and pop on over to Amazon. Or if you want to get a signed copy, my website, favorfat.com, I will include complimentary shipping. And if you're a fan of this podcast, maybe you've already read the book, go ahead and hit pause and go on over to Apple, Spotify, Google Play, wherever you're listening and rate and review and just share with a friend or two. I would so appreciate it. This helps us get our metabolic mission message out there. So today we're going to be talking about sleep. This is a solo cast. And if you are watching on YouTube, you see that I have some funky orange glasses on. What are these? These are blue light blockers. These are actually Patrick's, my husband's. He doesn't need eye help. He has perfect 2020 vision. Lucky him, because I have my contacts in. But normally what I'm doing is I'm wearing my glasses at night. And so I get the really cool clip-on versions of these. Super sexy. So we'll talk about these a little bit later. But the main thing to know is they block blue light. Blue light is a sleep enemy. But before we get into sleep, I have a few newsworthy items. One, protein, y'all, so important. Protein is the building block of the human body, these amino acids. When I work with clients, we talk about prioritizing protein. So I think of it as the center of the plate with all the veggies as accompaniments, colorful accompaniments and then fat for flavor and nourishment. So Diana Rogers, who you may know, if not check her out, her podcast is Sustainable Dish. She also made a marvelous movie called Sacred Cow. Key takeaway from that is it's not the cow, it's the how. So this movie helps us understand that it's not beef that is bad for the environment, it's how the cattle are raised and beef cattle is actually wonderful for the environment it's part of a natural 10-year process so check that movie out sacred cow back to protein diana's email list recently received um, a study that showed that protein higher protein nourishment i don't like the word diet rhymes with riot that's actually what the study said But this was better for weight loss, body fat reduction, and your lipids, your uh, metabolic panel, better than low calorie or intermittent fasting. Nice. I'm going to link this study in the show notes. But to keep it simple, ideally, each time you nourish yourself and you eat, you want to be eating protein about the size of the palm of your hand if you just want to make it super simple. So moving on. You've maybe heard of greenwashing. This is where companies attempt to appear to be ecologically sound, but it's really just BS. There's also a thing I call health watching. Washing, rather. (laughs) Watching, that's a Freudian slip, I think. Health washing. And I found an example in my own home this week. So what is it? freaking Tom's toothpaste, Tom's main hippy dippy brand. This brand is known for being echo, right? And healthy. Well, I was out of my normal Dr. Bronner's toothpaste. That's what I really like. And so I, this was in the cabinet. So I started using it and I immediately noted this just sweet, thickly sweet 
taste. And I thought, what the? So it's not going to be sugar, but I bet you anything there's sugar alcohols in this toothpaste. What is wrong with us, y'all? We need sweet toothpaste? Gosh, sugar nation, man. So yeah, sorbitol in this toothpaste. Also titanium dioxide. Sick. Europeans know that this is not a safe food additive. It's not allowed. So why is it in Tom's toothpaste? Gross. That stuff, now that I'm done barking about it on the nourishment mindsets, going in the trash can. Jeez. All right, my third and final point before we get to sleep. <laughs> I love picking on the American Heart Association. It sounds really great. They say life is why. My mother-in-law sent me a beautiful thank you card. Thank you, Karen, uh, for hosting her here. And I appreciated that very much, but I turned it around and I saw that it was a card produced by the American Heart Association. So what's wrong with that? Well, they've got some education on the back. They're talking about blood pressure, how to get healthy, get moving, eat healthy, maintain a healthy weight, follow your healthcare provider's advice. So what's my beef with this? My beef is not with the movement, that's fine. It's certainly not with any of the things that I just said, but when under eat healthy, reduce the amount of salt you eat. What about sugar? Is it really salt or is it that other white powder? Hmm. Eat more fruits, vegetables, and fat free and low fat dairy products. WTF y'all, really fat free and low fat products. So you're going to take nature's nourishment out of the product and add sweeteners and preservatives, Lord knows what else. And that's the American Heart Association, healthy eating. I don't think so. And then follow your healthcare provider's advice. Exactly. Well, maybe, but who's your healthcare provider? Is it Dr. Cholesterol Paranoia Syndrome, dude? And if they're talking to you about what to eat, I'd be aware there because mo most medical providers <laughs> receive zero nutrition education. So buyer beware there. So let's talk Z's. Let's get into the point here. Sleep is critical for your immune function. In the deep sleep, you produce HGH. That's what the gym dudes like to talk about, but it's very important human growth hormone. Sleep is also important for our mental health, our vitality, overall well-being, and more. Many skimp on sleep, and others think it's cool to brag about not needing any. That's just stupid. Sleep is critical for functioning optimally as a human being. There's a website, sleephealth.org, that I found. That was pretty interesting. It tells us that 50 million Americans have sleep issues and that one third of American adults don't get enough sleep. That's not surprising to me at all. I actually bet that it's higher. Now, y'all know I'm a real whole foods person, but sleep is just as important. Sleephealth.org has their 10 commandments of sleep. Mine are a little bit simpler. So mine is a zero, 10, two, one rule. So what in the heck am I talking about with that? So zero means the moment you wake up. So when you wake up, you're not maybe thinking about sleep unless you had a horrible night's rest. That happens to all of us sometimes. But a good night's sleep starts the moment you awaken. So what do I mean by that? First and foremost, I mean, don't be looking at your screen. You don't need that blue light first thing in the morning. Instead, what I recommend is getting your booty outside, barefoot, preferably. Go walk in the lawn, put your feet onto the earth and look at the natural light just for a few minutes. Take a few deep breaths, have some gratitude. Enjoy that first look of the morning. Why not look at something beautiful and be outside? Also, you want to make sure that you're harmonizing with your hormones. So when you awaken in the morning, your body is naturally elevating cortisol. And that's a great thing that helps us get up and get moving. So there's no need to have caffeine immediately. So my recommendation there is wait for an hour to have your coffee if you're a coffee drinker. Second thing, so that was zero. 
Think about how you're waking up because that's going to have an effect on how you go to sleep that night. Second tip, 10. So the first one was zero. This is 10. Avoid caffeine 10 hours before bedtime. So I go to, to my bed around 9, 30, 10 to read, which means that by noon, I'm not going to be having any more caffeine. Now, lately I've been drinking just one decaf a day. So it really doesn't apply to me, but a lot of us out there are coffee drinkers. So there it is, 10 hours. Now, two, so we had zero for your awakening, 10 for the caffeine, two. So this is actually supposed to be three, but it just doesn't happen in my house. So I'm gonna be honest and say two. And what I mean by two is no food two hours before bedtime, as in, for me, we're done with dinner by eight and we like those pleasures of the table and the long lingering dinners. So that's why three is just tough for me to be done by seven. We're usually not quite starting by seven. So that's just life. Shay Huey. Now, one, the last one, one. So we had zero awakening, 10, avoid the caffeine, two, close the mouth, close the kitchen two hours before bedtime. Now one, what is this? No blue lights, no blue lights one hour before bed. So I got my blue blockers on. I actually, when I remember, stick these suckers on as soon as the sun goes down. And yes, I walk around looking like a orange glass weirdo, uh, but this definitely helps with sleep. And the main point here is that you want to not have screen contact with your eyeballs. So that means the cell phones, the readers, the computers, the television, one hour before bed. Much better to just enjoy a book, a magazine, some breathing, meditation. You can even listen to music, but you just don't want to feast your eyes on the blue light because the blue light tells your brain that it's daytime. So we don't want to interfere with that. Some other tips, you know, you want to rid your bedroom of light. Sources here we have a street light in front of our house, so closing the shades, closing the door. Some of us like white noise. We definitely don't want to have electronics, television, stuff like that in the bedroom, which I said before. You want to put your phone in airplane mode so those EMFs are not interfering. For a lot of us, myself included, having a cooler temperature in the house at night is really helpful, as well as not exercising just before bed. So I'm not gonna go hit the gym and run up the Stairmaster and lift weights in the late evening, right before I'm trying to go to bed. So this episode was inspired by a listener. And this is a reminder, y'all, if you have a question or a topic you wanna to address, send me a note. You can find me on Favor Fat. All my um, links to everything are there. So Jason from Oregon, is wondering about raw honey before bed. So the thinking in the article that he sent me, thank you, Jason, is that honey is a source of glucose, i.e. sugar. And this produces serotonin. These are the feel-good hormones. And also that there is supposedly, I didn't know this, a small amount of melatonin in honey, which is known to be anti-inflammatory. So in thinking about this, I'm certainly a proponent of raw organic honey, especially if it's local honey, as a nourishment source in moderation. So for example, how would you use that? In our house, it's usually one of two ways. Um, one, well, one of three ways, let's, let's think about this. So the first might be a breakfast way. So a full fat Greek yogurt drizzled with honey is one of the things Fletcher loves to eat in the morning. Myself too, when I break the fast. We also sometimes have a little bit of um, raw organic honey drizzled over berries if we want something a little sweet, sweet at night. And then the third thing I just thought of is if I'm making like a, a marinade, maybe I'm doing like a honey Dijon for a salmon or a chicken, you might put some raw organic honey in there. So I love honey as, as a flavor, as a food source. I wouldn't go eating a ton of it uh, just because it's a lot of sugar, but at least it's more of like a natural sugar. But I, I have to say, I don't recommend taking honey before bedtime because as a professor in my nutrition network put it, 
you really cannot rest and digest at the same time. So if we are having honey or a bedtime snack or anything other than water or say a decaf tea before bed, you're asking your body to process that source of nourishment. And this is not something the body is designed to do as it is sleeping. So you might fall asleep, but you're not gonna have the deep restful sleep there. So you can't rest and digest. That's essentially what I think of honey right before bed. You know, but if you're doing it, Jason, and it's working for you, then don't change it up. We don't have to be dogmatic about this stuff. There is some research about having a pinch of salt before bed, and that's actually something I've been trying. Now, this is not a randomized controlled trial. It's just me. I like to try things. So far, so good. The, the few nights that I've done it, it's worked. And I happen to be someone who loves salt. So that's not a problem for me having <laughs> a little bit of salt hit before bed. So maybe try that. And Jason, I appreciate your question. So that's going to be it for today, folks. I am wishing you a nourished week. And I look forward to being with y'all again next Tuesday. Bye now.